So good morning, everyone. It's Albert Kaufman. I'm coming to you live from Portland, Oregon, and I'm going to share with you today some of my thinking about Facebook. I've been teaching people how to use Facebook almost as long as I've been using it. I kind of came to Facebook uh, early with um, an understanding of other kinds of social media and I thought, well, Facebook, okay, I'll learn how to use that. And as I was learning it and getting interested in it, I decided that uh, it made sense to pass on that information to other people because it seems like a kind of complicated tool. And I noticed that people weren't necessarily making the best use of it. So I continue to find that to be true. And so today I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of different things. Um, Basically, what I'm, I think I'm most interested in is giving you a sense of how I treat Facebook, how I'm, how I am on it, what I do on it. Um, let's turn off the chat and kind of where my thinking is these days about Facebook, both as a marketing person, but also as an individual on the platform. And so I hope that I will be able to share with you some of the, you know, tools and tips and tricks and types of things, but also some of my philosophy about like what this is all about. Um, and I think one of the main things I want to impart with you is the curiosity that I come to Facebook with. It's a little bit of the curiosity that I come to life with, but I think that it's important to you know, when we're scrolling around and looking at this thing, that to be curious about what's actually there. You know, we all tend to focus on this area, which is your status update, but there's a lot more going on on a fan page um, that you don't necessarily see um, or on a personal profile that you don't really see. So I'm going to start um, with my personal profile and I'm going to encourage you to take notes um, if you do have questions, maybe hold on to them, and we will get to them. Um, I'll take a break in about 15 minutes or so and see if you have any questions, and I'll try to answer those, and um, then you know, I'll continue on for a while. So without further ado, I'm just going to check real quick and make sure that uh, everybody's here. And we've got 20 of you. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, everybody. Yay. That's great. Okay, so Facebook. So here I am on my homepage. Now I'm looking at it with the newsfeed version. Um, if I wanted to just look at myself and just what I'm up to, I would click on my name. And this shows me my cover picture, my profile picture, um, a chance for me to update information, and then also a chance to post something and to update my status. This is also where I might do some um, might take some efforts to change something. So for instance, if I wanted to link myself to my fan page, this is where I would do that. I would update my work and education area. And then these items end up showing up over here on the left in on my personal page. So when someone comes to my profile, if they want to find out more about me, they can click on one of these and they end up going off to one of my various fan pages for different things that I do. So that's important. I think it's a kind of key when you're doing anything in social media, if you are wanting to attract anyone, whether it's dating, whether it's business, whether it's, uh, you know, just to be found around a particular thing that you're interested in. Um, Sarah Hope was asking me last night a little bit about um, how to create a better online presence. And I think it's important for all these social media that you at least fill in the basics, you know, where you live, um, if you have a fan page connecting to it, um, where you're from, that kind of thing, and as much information as you want to share. Now, many of us are, you know, hesitant to share a lot on social media and, you know, particularly our particulars, like our phone number, our email address, and that's, that's just fine. I think if anyone wants to find anyone these days, it's not really that hard. Um, if you, you know, put your, put some effort into it. So this is where you would come to, you know, update any of the 
kinds of things that you want to update as yourself. Now, since I mentioned privacy just now, I want to point out to you where privacy settings live. Now, some of the information that I'm going to share today will probably be um, pretty basic for some of you, but I imagine that you will find some gems within here, even if some of this is basic. But for those that this is basic, if you click on this down arrow over on the right hand side, you'll notice that you have a bunch of different options over here. You can create a page from here. You can also come down to settings. And if you come to settings, that is where you'll find your security settings as well as your privacy settings. Now, I'm not going to go into every last setting. Um, in this area. In fact, I'm probably not going to go into any of the settings, but I do recommend that everybody take some time and go into these settings and figure out what makes sense for you. You know, a lot of becoming better, a better digital citizen is not necessarily, um, you know, figuring out every last thing for yourself, but there's a couple of areas where you have to make choices. You have to actually go in, you have to read this section right here in the middle and figure out, okay, who do I want contacting me? Who do I want to be able to see what I post? Now this little area right here about who um, wants to see your future posts, so I'm gonna go into that a little bit in a moment. You can set that here, but you can also change it per post, which is what I tend to do. So over here, um, another area that I want to mention to you is notifications. I tend to turn all of my notifications for Facebook off. And what I mean by that is that I don't want notifications to come to me via email. This little section right here is where notifications come in that would not also possibly come to me via email. But since I'm on Facebook a lot of the time, and many people are, you can just as easily ch click on this section and see, okay, here are the various people who have um, messaged me recently or posted something that's important. So as far as the rest of these areas, again, you'll want to take a little bit of a drive through this section and see what you would like to receive and what you wouldn't. But it's really up to you. Um, someone can set this up for you. You know, you can just give them the instructions. Okay, I want everything shut down. Or you can do that on your own and just have a look. Um, basically, you want to look at this top section here. You want to look at your privacy settings and you want to look at your security settings. Those are three areas that I would recommend everyone look. So now I'm going to come into the news feed view as a personal profile. So this is me, and this is the information that I get in this news feed. Now, Facebook continually moves your feed from most recent stories to top stories. It just, that seems to be what the main setting is for them. So you'll want to, if you want to see what's most recently been posted, go in there and change that. Now, I'm using a program in a different browser that I'm going to turn you on to called Facebook Purity. And what that does, you can look it up if you like Facebook Purity, and that adds on a layer onto Facebook that allows you to change a lot of different settings. So for instance, you can permanently set your news feed so that it will show up as most recent posts. I'm just gonna do a quick sec, quick check here and see. Okay, so, um, just so you know, you can all post in the chat area if you want to. Um, I'm not sure how that affects me on my end, but if you needed to, you're welcome to. So here I am again on the news feed area. This is the news feed in the section, in the center section. I can post something here that I'd like to post. And then also on the left hand side, you can see a bunch of different fan pages that I have, um, more fan pages that I have, and apps. Um, friends and groups and then other things down below that. All of these things that appear on the left can be moved about. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about having curiosity about Facebook. When you come into Facebook, you don't see uh, a lot of the different possibilities. So for instance, if I go over here to this left-hand thing, I see, oh my goodness, if I click on this little gearbox that isn't even showing, I can move something around. I can rearrange things. Okay, I think I'll move that down here. So you can customize this area a little bit. Um, and 
as you scroll around, you'll also notice other things show up. Oh, there's a sort of somewhat hidden pull down menu here. So I don't want to see this particular posting from this person. I can hide it. Um, I can do other things. I can unfollow somebody. I can hide any information from a particular source. I can report a post. I can save this for reading later if I want to. That's a nice new feature that's come up. You can kind of have a bookmark um, area. So I've just saved that article to the saved area. And now if I go back to that, I can see, oh, how interesting. For future reference, I can go and look at that. So it's kind of like a bookmarking system if you're used to browsers. So now I wanted to just share with you um, some different options that you can do with your personal profile and sharing. So if you want to make a post that's going to get the most engagement possible, you want to create a photo album. So the way to create a photo album is by clicking up here and create a photo album. Now, this has been sort of the common wisdom of in Facebook circles for the last couple of years that that gets the most engagement. Now, with the changes that Facebook is making to fan pages or business pages and the engagement that they're going to get, I'm not quite sure that that's going to continue to be the highest form of engagement, but it sure looks great on the screen. So if you scroll down, for instance, through your newsfeed and you look at the things that take up the most space. So for instance, here's a one picture taking up quite a lot of space. Here's another picture taking up a lot of space. But if I go ahead and I create a photo album, you can see that, let's see here. So I'm just going to pick these four pictures at random and I'm going to add them in and I'm going to call it a day in the life and random pics. And I'm going to tag this by it being part of my world. I'm not going to say much about the pictures because I'm just using this for um, demonstration purposes. I, again, as I mentioned earlier, I can set this to public or I can set this to just my friends. I can also pick to post this just to any list that I want. I've created a number of different lists and I'll talk about that in a minute. But for right now, I'm going to make this a public album and I'm going to post that. And now if you look at my news feed and what will show up on other people's news feeds, who follow me, you see three pictures. And if I had posted nine pictures, you probably would have seen, you know, some subset of that. Maybe it's still three, maybe it's six. But whatever it is, it's a lot of space. So as you can see, this picture shows up, you know, taking up a certain amount of space. This picture shows up taking up a huge amount of space. Plus, with all the different pictures, I can drill down and go, okay, well, I'm interested in this picture. And then suddenly you're in my photo album and any of these photos could have you know more going on i could be tagging them with some kind of link to come to a class of mine i could be tagging them with the name of the business you know i could be doing a lot of different things and by the way if anyone can tell me where king quesadilla has landed i'm curious it's quite a good food cart here in portland all right so that's a photo album um, i also could instead have added photos videos I could say something, um, and then there's lots of other things that I can do um, besides that tagging a person, um, tagging a place, all these kind of things. So again, that's the way to get the highest amount of engagement on Facebook is by posting photo albums. Uh, and part of the reasoning for this too is that once someone goes into one of my photo albums, so for instance, I'll go down into a photo album that I have as an example. Uh, let's see here, my albums. So if I go to this, this beautiful album of Manzanita Beach House and I drill down into another depth and I'm looking at pictures, you know, a person, once they're in a photo album, my experience, my own personal behavior is that I start clicking through and looking at all the pictures. So, you know, you might consider that is probably what's going to happen when someone comes to one of your photo albums as well and plan accordingly. I can talk about that more if, if people are interested. 
So that's a little bit about the newsfeed. Um, you also will notice up on the top of your page, this is where people who want to friend you um, will come in and you can choose whether or not to accept their friendship. Now that's a whole kind of subclass in itself. Who do you accept for friendship and who don't you? Um, I first started with Facebook pretty much being open, thinking, okay, well, this is something I'm going to use to promote myself and my classes. And uh, I just sort of let everybody in. And then I went through a period where I was like, well, I don't really want anyone on here that I don't know. And then I had a class with somebody who used it very much in a marketing way. And she was letting everybody that friended her um, in as a friend. And she had thousands and thousands of friends. And that enabled her to invite those people to events like her classes. It also allowed her to have a lot of connections and a lot and a huge network. So I have basically followed in her footsteps for better or worse. And that's led to me having lots and lots of friends on Facebook. Um, that has pluses and minuses. Um, the pluses are, you know, I have lots of people to network with. I can connect people really well. Um, I end up meeting people that I wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, you know, there's strength in numbers. So there's certain things that you can do on Facebook with large uh, amounts of people. In fact, I'm going to open up um, the other browser that I had talked about before, just so I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, so there are those pluses, uh, and there's probably more pluses. It's, it's kind of an ongoing learning experiment for me being in a situation where I have a lot of uh, connections on Facebook and other social media because it's it's very unusual. It's a little bit like being a celebrity sometimes. It can be, okay, so now I'll go into some of the negatives. Some of the negatives are um, you, you are more public. More people do know about you. You end up meeting people who um, come up to you and, and somewhat know you because they are following you on Facebook and they might only have 10 friends or 20 or 100 and you're one of them. And so all of the stuff that you post ends up in their newsfeed. Sometimes I meet people who know me better than I do. It's okay, that's not completely true, but there is a little bit of a sense of that. And um, other negatives are if you're trying to keep various groups of people from knowing each other, for instance, if you have family that you don't really want um to know about your friends or you have a social life that you don't want to share with you know, some people or other people, it's very hard to keep um, groups distinct. Now, what you can do um, if you're interested is you can create uh, lists of friends. And I've done that um, over here. Let's see, where is it? So friends, it's very hidden here. Facebook kind of likes to do its own thing. And it's all of these friends lists are have been created by Facebook. The only ones that I've created are ones like that have this little icon. So if I go in here to, let's say, my family list, um, I've only got a couple of people on here, but this is, uh, these are all members of my family. So um, I can go in here to a different list of close friends, for instance. And on this list, I have 70 people. And I can look at just the news feed of those 70 people. And I can also post, if I want to, just to those 70 people. So if I wanted to choose just a list of close friends, I could choose that as a group of people to post something to. Now, that does not necessarily mean that only those people are going to end up seeing the thing that I've posted. So. You know, if you have something that you want to share, I think it's pretty good uh, reasoning to believe that your thing, whatever it is, no matter how small of an audience you have chosen to share it with, there is a chance that it will be on the cover of Time magazine. Now, obviously, that's an exaggeration, but your, you know, anything that you post online really does have the um, ability to travel. Um, anything, anything you take a picture of on your phone, same thing. So if you are trying to be private, if you're trying to lead a private life, if you are trying to keep anything hidden, do not post it online. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take a little sip of coffee. Mm. All righty.
Just gonna do a real quick chat, check and see if anyone has chatted anything. No, nope, it doesn't look like anyone can. Okay, that's fine too. Let's see, I asked you to post pictures or post um, in my fan page, so I'll just do a quick check and see if anyone has done that. Okay, oh, we do have some questions, cool. Kathy, okay, great. Kathy's listening on the phone, and how can I get the audio on my computer? Mm, good question, Kathy. Uh, Citrix support is my best uh, guess for you for right now. I can't help you troubleshoot that. All right, but I will be recording this. I am recording this, and so um, I will send you a link to the recording um, when this is finished. So you're welcome to listen to it again. All right, so back we are to the news feed. And as I've mentioned, um, I can also look at this news feed, like I said, via these various lists. So my list of close friends news feed is generally what I tend to look at. And I've got some fun friends. There's my friend Ben from Philadelphia. And my friend Alex posts some interesting things. Anyway, um, so that is one way also to make Facebook like a little bit more manageable as a human being is to create smaller groups of people's postings that you'll then look at. Um, you can also do that. You can also add into that list um, fan pages as well. So for instance, if I wanted to add a new fan page that I've just created recently, do something today to write the world, I can add what that fan page posts into this stream, and that way they will be part of it as well. All right, well, I have spent a bunch of time on um, personal uh, fan page or personal profile stuff. I think one last thing I want to share with you is a way of uh, working with Facebook that uh, I've sort of only used through Facebook, but I'm sure it could be applied elsewhere. So, for instance, here's my notifications. And if I want to open up just this one, this one, and this one. I hold down the command key for the Mac, and I think it's control for the for the uh, PC, and then I click on the ones that I want to look at. What that does is it opens up new tabs that then uh, you know I can look at. And once I look at the tab, then I close it, or I do something with it. And so. And then I finish the work that I'm doing with that tab, and then I move on to the next one and see who has, you know, posted something about something that I've said. And then I move to the next one, and I move to the next one, and I move to the next one. And finally, I finish up and close, uh, you know, whatever needs to be closed, and then move on with my work. And so what that does is instead of going from one uh, posting and then coming back to the screen and then going to the next posting, it enables me to save a little bit of time. And I think that's a key thing with uh, Facebook and all online work is if you can cut corners and save yourself some time, um, that's gonna be huge. So let's just see. All right, so I'm gonna move on now to the um, area of fan pages. Fan pages can be reached from your personal profile in two ways. One of them is by clicking on your fan page over here on the left. And then another way, what that does is it gives you certain functionality and it leaves you with certain other functionality. So right now you can see I'm still traveling as Albert. But if I move to this fan page via the pull down menu on the right hand side, then you can see I'm now traveling as my fan page. Even though you can see my picture, the name of my page is up here. So what this does is it, it prevents me, if I'm traveling around as my fan page, it prevents me from um, doing certain things. So for instance, if I come down here to these questions and I click on Kathy's profile, I can't do anything on Kathy's profile. I can share something of hers because she's probably made it public, but I can't talk to her, I can't message her, I can't interact with her. Only when I'm traveling as myself can I interact with another person. 
So what can one do on a fan page? Okay, so first of all, fan pages, business pages, they're all the same thing. You can tell you're on a fan page because usually you'll see um, the likes button and you'll see the opportunity to like something and how many likes the, the page has. Now I've gone and I've moved my tabs around a little bit. Um, there are a whole bunch of different tabs that I've got. You can manage those tabs by coming in here as your fan page and moving them about. So I'm gonna move this one around and then you'll see that it will show up. Um, let's see, it should show up up on the top here. Now I've got, on my fan page, I've got a cover picture, I've got a profile picture, um, and then I've got, I join my list button. This is something that you can install if you have Constant Contact or another email service provider. You can add one of these to your fan page, and this is basically the, what people would see when they come down to this tab. They would go ahead and join my email list. Um, and then I've also got links to various other things like videos and my Google Plus page and things. Now, a new aspect of fan pages that they've just added recently are the sign up um, buttons. And basically, you, it's a, I'm sorry, it's a call to action button. And you'll see that on some pages and on some pages it's not there yet. I can choose from all of these different kinds of buttons. So it could be a contact button, it could be a booking um, situation where you're trying to schedule people. Um, playing games, I can't imagine why one would want to do that, but maybe that's your business. Um, it could be a shop now button or sending someone to go and watch a video. Now, since I'm wanting people to sign up for my newsletter, I've gone in and I've created this as a sign up button. And this is a new feature that has just come to Facebook recently, and you'll start seeing it more and more when you go out to other fan pages. Um, to look under the cover of your fan page, you'll want to come into your settings area. But before I go there, I did touch upon just a moment ago, there's a difference, there's a number of differences between traveling as your fan page and traveling as yourself. So when I come in here as my fan page and I click on build audience, I can't invite my friends to like my page. I can suggest the page, but if I come in here as myself, um, I'll just give you a little demo of that. So if I come into the page as myself and I click on this build audience button, then I get the opportunity to invite friends. And this is a nice thing that you can do. You can go scroll through here and invite all of your friends to your fan page. And you know that's a good practice to do if you're trying to let your friends know about a business or an activity that you're doing. Now when I come in here, and I come via the pull down menu, I then become the fan page. And let's see here. And so I don't have the same options under build audience. I can do other things. I can probably buy advertising. And that's a big part of what's going on with Facebook actually, now that I've mentioned it is advertising. They're really wanting fan pages to switch from, you know, sending out your good information here and instead having you um, boost it. Now, that is usually done, if you wanted to boost a post, you would just come in here and you would have a look and say, okay, I want to boost the post to people who like my page, people who like my page and their friends, or people I can pick through targeting. And here are some of the targeting audiences. I can go in, it's giving me uh, Oregon, United States, um, I can go in further and, you know, go in and say, I also want Washington and no, not really 18 year olds, but I'm mostly interested in 35 to, uh, for, let's say 52 year olds. And I'm um, just, you can target men or women. You can add, um, uh, interests if you want. And then if you clicked on save, you can see that with my total budget of $20, I would reach 3,500 to 9,300 people. Now it used to be, given that this fan page has uh, 2,366 likes, that when I would post something in the past, about a year ago, um, you know, 50% or 60% of the people would see my post. 
now, as you can see, um, this post has reached 18 people. And it's probably only reached that many people because people are active on it. So let's see, someone else have a question? Do you get many clicks on the sign up button? Um, no, not really. But I'm not. Let's see, that's, I'll just leave it at no, not really. Um, Jess asked if I get many clicks on the sign up button up here with the join my list button. And so far as I can tell, I'm not getting that many clicks on it, but feel free to give it a try and give it a, you know, see what you think of it. Um, I just think it's a good practice to have it there. And every once in a while, I think people are using it. So again, you can do uh, boosting the post if you want to, um, if you'd like to try to get your information out there. I'll go ahead and show you what that leads to. Um, here is the statistics, which you can anyone can go and look at under insights. If your page has about 25 people or more, I believe that's when insights start kicking in. It might be 100 or more. I'm not positive about that. But you can see here um, some of the statistics of what this page has done. So if I look at um, this area, for instance, and I click um, so if I look at all posts, I can l and see kind of what you know has happened in the past. And if I click on reach, I can see that something that I posted on 120 2015 got the most you know reach of anything that I've ever posted. And it was an interesting image. Um, so you know it's possible I could boost it at this point and get even more reach if I wanted to, but that's not really that interesting to me. Um, but it could be like if you're trying to sell something, you know, that would be an obvious statistic to go and look at and to check and see, okay, what, um, you know, what is doing well? And these statistics are definitely worth checking if you want to try to figure out what's working and what's not. You know, I can see both of the posts that I did in the beginning of this year were the highest reach that I've ever had. And I didn't do any boosting. I didn't pay for it. So that's just kind of interesting. In fact, all the stuff that I've done since this year started has done pretty well. Interesting. Okay. So I wanted to show you, though, an area that's very important when you're thinking about Facebook fan pages. I'm going to start over from the top. So here I am in the fan page, and I'm going to click on um, the settings area. So right across the top here, this is basically like your admin panel. And if I click on settings, this is where I get to choose, you know, the settings for the page. And there's a lot to adjust here, um, but you only have to do it once generally, but it's good to look at. Um, you can just accept the defaults that are there. They're not terrible. Um, it's basically kind of like a wide open, wild, wild west situation. But if you want to sort of, you know, constrict it a little bit, um, this is the place to do that. This is also the place to go in case you have made multiple pages and you'd like to merge them. Um, it's also possible, let's say you have a personal page and you were actually sort of representing a business. And you, instead of having that personal page, you'd like to have those people on a fan or a business page. That's possible to do as well, and I can talk to you about that um, offline if that interests you. So over here in this left-hand side, you can see some of the different areas that are worth um, going into and adjusting. So for instance, the page info area is um, all editable. And it, you know what's just fascinating to me is like, why isn't this edit button a little bit more visible? Um, so this is part of the curiosity and part of the sort of game aspect of Facebook is, okay, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, you know, have to edit something. And this is where I would come to do that. So, you know, these are different areas that I would recommend everybody edit and fill in as much information as possible. This is also, you know, information that Google goes out and searches for. So if you leave, you know, aspects of your uh, business empty, um, you'll be less likely to be found. So I'm going to go back to settings again. This is also where you can decide, okay, I'm going to post as myself, or I'm going to post as the business page. Um, actually, this looks like a bug. 
<laughs> we found a bug. Interesting. Okay. Um, notifications. You can decide again whether or not you'd like to get email notifications about things on your page. And as you can see here, I've set both of mine to off. Um, this is also where you'll go to add in um, different page roles for your page, um, who you want to have you know, working on the page. I always recommend to people that they find somebody to be a backup um, admin person for the fan page. Um, you don't have to make the person uh, an admin, you can make them an editor, but it's a really good practice to have somebody be able to be a backup. One, uh, for one reason, in case your account gets closed or you can't have access to it, you would suddenly not be able to have access to your fan page as well. And if you're interested at all in Facebook support or receiving Facebook support or help, good luck. Um, there is no such thing. I mean, you can search through the Facebook you know, guides and things, but really there is nothing out there. I've created a support page just sort of in a moment of humor just to see what people would say and if anyone would find it. So if you want to go find the Facebook guru page, that's me. And I do answer questions off of that sometimes. Um, anyway, so these are just some areas that you can go in and look at and see whether or not that you want to tweak your page and, you know, adjust it a little bit here and there. So again, I'm going to come back to my page. Just double check. Looks like there's a couple more questions here. Okay. Okay. Kathy says she's listening on her phone. Yep. And I'm not seeing any more comments. Let's see. All right. All right. Um, why don't I take a break just for a second and I will open up the questions on um, the control panel for GoToWebinar. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them now and I'll see what I can do for you. All right. So I'm just getting a lot of I can hear you's and everybody seems fine. I know Sarah's got a bunch of questions. Sarah, I think you and I are going to have to uh, have a little bit more uh, time together perhaps to um, to talk. But uh, all right, I think I'm just going to let that be and go back to the nobody can ask any questions <laughs> format. Um, well, I hope that the webinar has been going well for you all so far. Um, and I'm going to just take a breath, maybe stretch for a moment. Oh, oh, I wanted to mention something to you as a little bit of an aside, but I discovered something earlier today called coffativity. And uh, I'll just put that on for a second so you can get a sense of what that's like. And it's basically a sound of people mulling around in a cafe, which allows you to hopefully work better. You Supposedly, you can concentrate better if you are amongst people in a cafe. So if you can't make it to a cafe, you can use coffativity. <laughs> I just think that's brilliant. All right, so back to the fan page. So what to do with the fan page nowadays? You can, again, as I mentioned with your personal page, you can do um, a posting um, of a photo album. So you can come in here and you can create a photo album from pictures that you have. Um, I did one with the personal page. It's basically the same thing. Um, you can also just create a status. You also have the opportunity to uh, make an offer. Facebook offers are pretty much like a Groupon situation where you just post an offer that you want to give, um, put it in the title of the offer, put it in the description, and then you can start to do some targeting. You can do advertising and um, make your offer to the world. So that's interesting. You can also add a milestone. Um, so for instance, my first uh, paid webinar on Facebook. And I had it here at the house. And uh, yeah. And then you can see what a milestone looks like. Um, many people would add a picture to this to make it, you know, to pop a little bit more. It um, looks like you can't boost a, web, uh, a milestone. Um, but this is a way to share, you know, successes, how your business is doing. You hired a new person um, or something like that. And those... 
probably have a tendency to land on more people's um, fan pages, or I'm sorry, on news feeds as does anything else. Now, something I n noticed now is that this has landed on top of the item that I am sort of more interested in sharing with people. So I'm going to go here to this right pull down. And I'm going to click on pin to top. And what that does is it moves the item that I created up to the top of the page. You can see this little orange sort of pinning. Um, and you can only have one item pinned at a time. But there it is. It's been pinned. And so that will then, if someone were to come to this fan page, um, then that's the item that they would see first off is this um, question that I have. So I'm looking right now at the fan page from the viewpoint of um, me being on the fan page and nothing else happening. So some of what is happening, though, from time to time, is over here I'm seeing on post to page. So for instance, everybody that has posted on the page, um, their posts land over in this little area. And, and so those posts don't actually make it onto the fan page unless I share them. So for instance, None of these, I can't share any of these, but I could share one that had a picture, for instance. And then if I shared that, it would then go onto the page. So I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like. Um, let's see, I'll go over to Farm My Yard, which is a little project that some of you know that I do. And I'm going to come over here to the area where, so here is something by Kevin Fitzpatrick. Um, and if I come in here, he's been working on some drawings and he wanted to share that with the world and he's offering his services. Well, I'm going to take that and I'm going to now share that onto the Farm My Yard page. So, and I'm going to say, yay, Kevin, he rocks because he really does. So now once I've done that, then if I close this and I come back to the Farm My Yard page, you can see that I've reposted the information that Kevin posted to the page, and now it's posted as the page. And what that means is if I go to my personal page, for instance, and I look at my news feed, there's a good chance that that's something that will show up uh, up on top. And you know what? It didn't. So that tells you something. But um, it's there and it's gone out to however many people um, you know are following Farm My Yard and some subset of them. So that's a that's a nice way of working. I'm gonna come back in again to the Albert Ideation page and show you a little bit more about what to do on your page. So obviously there's putting information out there, you know, information out, pictures, um, photo albums successes, um, more pictures, <laughs> videos, um, and articles. Okay, actually, articles. That's a great one to mention. Let's take an article. Um, I'm going to actually just grab the Coffivity page. And now here's something that's a lot of fun, and you'd probably never know that it was possible, but here I'm going to share this with you. So. I'm going to take the URL from the website that um, I just went to. Now, this could be an article. Okay, so for instance, um, it could be, you know, a lot of different things. So for right now, though, I'm just taking this URL. Now, I could leave the URL up there just like that and just post this just like this. I mean, that's fine. Why not? But here's what I would suggest instead. Um, I just found a neat new resource. That I'm just about enjoy. <laughs> okay, so I can stop there and I could post this, or I can keep going. So let's see. First of all, what images are they giving me? They're giving me all these different choices. Well, you know, actually, none of those really work for me. Instead, I think 
I should be the, the poster child for coffivity. So I've uploaded a picture of myself. Now I could stop there and I could post this, or I could continue to sort of create um, my own news about this. When you can't make it to a coffee shop. Okay, so I could stop there, or I can also continue to edit the information that is provided. Um, So when you can't make it to a coffee shop, try this at home. So now you can see I've gone from you know, three different things, this picture, this uh, title, and the subtitle, and I've adjusted all three, and now I'm going to post them, and you can see how that shows up. Now, obviously, I'm just sort of being playful and you know, not necessarily taking the time to curate this information in a way that makes a lot of sense, but I made some sense out of it and I've, you know, personalized it a little bit and I've changed around, you know, what the site title and subtitle are. And when this is really useful is when you have a blog post, let's say, and you're posting your blog post and instead of the title of the blog post showing up, you get some kind of funky title. And instead of the picture that you want to show up, some other picture shows up. So that's, you know, a little bit of how this works. Um, another way that one can be, be your page and, and do something useful with it. So now I'm looking at the newsfeed version of my page. I'm traveling as my fan page and I've clicked on the F over here on the left. And so instead of seeing, you know, the fan page, uh, sort of admin area, now I am looking at the fan page as, um, uh, in the newsfeed version. So also, you can see that um, Facebook loves showing you top stories. I'm going to go for most recent. And I encourage you um, to either install, I'll show you that Facebook Purify that I talked about before. Okay, so this is how I see Facebook when I'm looking at it on a different browser. You can see this FBP item, and that's called Facebook Purity. and that gives you all sorts of interesting things that you can choose. So, for instance, um, Clyde Glenn doesn't want to be my friend. Okay, so you can take out or put in different kinds of things by using this um, product. I, I recommend checking it out, Facebook Purity. So, um, another part of using two different browsers um, to use Facebook, and I'm sorry, I'm going off on a little tangent here, but I've installed on my Chrome browser this little guy called Facebook Invite All. And what that does is it allows me to invite people to do various things in mass. So I can invite um, 100 people or 1,000 people to an event. And you can just look under extensions um, for every browser. There is a version of this Invite All. So check that out. All right, so back to being a fan page and a business page. Um, here I am, and I'm looking at the various uh, pages that I follow. So here's one that I just love and I never see enough of. Um, um, so, you know, why am I here also? I'm here to find content. I'm here to interact with other small businesses that I am connected with. I'm here to check out the competition and what they're doing. You know, I can come in here um, and let's say I want to um, see what some other competition is doing. So, boom, I'm going to go out, look for another ideation company. Well, they're called Ideation Box, and they're doing these kind of things. And I could go in here and I could, you know, comment on their stuff and say hello. But I can also just sort of keep an eye on them by liking them and having their information show up in my news feed. So again, now here's this beautiful mandala. I'm a big fan of mandalas, and I really love Don Mala's uh, work. I don't know the person, but the, every day they post something brilliant. So I'm going to take this content, and I'm going to click on share. And now this is going to go on my fan page. And I'm going to say, you know, one more incredible piece of art. I love Don Mala. Now I'm gonna make her name into a link there, and that'll give, or him, 
um, give that person a little bit more exposure. And I haven't talked about making links, but I'm hoping that many of you understand how to make links. If not, it's basically just you type in the at sign, start typing a letter um, or something, uh, a word, and then suddenly you are in business and that word is turned into a link. And then that link is kind of then the search engine optimization on whatever it is you've made a link of increases. So again, here's just some you know ways to find um, information that you could share. Oh, look at that, a neat new resource. You know, you can come in here and just do some searching. You know, you can do some commenting on things that you find. Oh, so here's the Farm My Yard information I just posted on Farm My Yard. It showed up in the news feed of the fan page. Um, since I have all of my fan pages following one another, I can see, okay, cool. And you know what? I love Kevin so much. I think I'm going to just go ahead and share that on my fan page as well since I want to support him. He made a beautiful beautiful image here. Okay, so I'm going to come back and just see if there are any more questions that have landed in the area that I asked you to post them. Uh, okay, so Diva asks, if you choose the Shop Now button, does that link to a photo album with offerings or to your website? You can link it to any URL you want to. Um, Sarah Hope asked, you mentioned tagging a link in a photo album, and I was wondering how to tag a link as opposed to a person. Okay, so what I meant by that was if I'm in my photos, and let's say I'm looking at this photo. So right now I've got life on Division Street, Portland, Oregon, and I've said that it's you know somewhere near where I am. What I meant by that is I can tag this picture with um, anything. I can tag it with uh, the, you know, Portland, um, let's see, so village building convergence. Okay, that's not working, but anything that this page has ever touched or liked, um, I could then add a tag and you can see it shows up over here. Um, I also mean by tagging that I could put in a URL. So I can put that here. Um, I could grab that here and then put it up into the um, information about this picture. And what that'll do is that then if this picture is ever shared, um, Oftentimes, this URL and the information that comes from that is then what will be shared further um, on the picture. So this is a this is another class, maybe almost all on its own, of different things that one can do with photos um, and how to to tag them correctly, and you know how hashtags work and things like that. Um, you know, this kind of mirrors what's going on on Pinterest this whole idea of having tags and having the, the imagery that you've created then be shareable in certain ways. And, you know, some ways are better than others, but, um, you know, that's kind of how that is all working. So there's more to be said about that. Um, you would be adding questions. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. So Sarah's asking how to make fan pages. And yes, you can make them from the down arrow over here. Uh, actually, let me move over here. Um, to make a page, you just click on Create Page. And then you have to switch back to being yourself. I'll go ahead and do that. And then you just go through the, a wizard here. So you would pick cause or community or a local business, fill out the information, and then it will take you through a wizard that within about two minutes, you have set up a fan page. So let's see here. It's going to make me change identities so I can get back to uh, my fan page. All right. So I thought a post would reach all of the people who like or follow you. What is the real way it works? Well, unfortunately, it is the real way it works is that 
If you make a friends list, as I've talked about before and I've got on my website, I'll try to remember to include a link to that to everybody who um, is asking questions. Um, it's That's the way to make sure that you see things posted that you want to see from other people. But in terms of getting other people to see the things that you post, um, if you're a person, you can, you know, you can up the ante by adding pictures and tagging people. But um, as a fan page, you unfortunately have to advertise at this point. Or your fan page has to be something that has a lot of attraction to it. Like you have a lot of um, people involved in the project. So for instance, churches or roller derbies or bakeries, you know, things that are very visual, things where there's a lot of people involved, those kinds of things tend to um, get a lot of uh, engagement and people making comments and things. So that's a little bit of how it works. And it's all in progress too. It's, it's, in, it, it's not set in stone. So that's one of the interesting things about this is that it's continually being developed. It's continually being changed. I'm somewhat grateful that today during this webinar, uh, something hasn't popped up. Um, it, you know, some new development hasn't popped up and freaked me out because that's happened before I've taught the class and suddenly seen that, uh, you know, a new change has just happened. Okay, so Catherine says, um, if you unlike or unfollow someone, do they know? Uh, I don't believe they do, unless they are using <laughs> Facebook Purity, um, in which case there is a little uh, aspect over here called deleted friends alert, and I can see who has deleted me. So uh, on normal Facebook, you don't see that, but I know from this that Clyde Glenn has possibly um, unfriended me. Um, has he really? I'm not sure. I don't know that that necessarily works as advertised, but maybe it does. I'm not sure. But generally, I don't think, you know, unless you have a very small number of friends, um, you're likely someone is not going to know um, if you have unfriended them. Now, they will find out once they try to tag you in something and the tag doesn't work or they try to message you and that doesn't work. So just know that. I tend to unfollow rather than unfriend these days. Uh, I don't have offer on my page, only event and milestone. Any idea why? Yeah, um, this is for Molly. And Molly, uh, thanks for being here today, by the way. Um, yeah, that is just something that's being rolled out right now. And we'll um, probably get to all the fan pages soon. It, it started about a month ago. I saw it on very few fan pages. And then um, suddenly it was starting to be on more of them. Okay. So I think I've answered all your questions. Um, if you have more questions about Facebook, um, I would be glad to answer them. Feel free to email me back. I'm going to send you out a link to the recording from today. And I'll, I'm also available just in general. You can always post a question here to my fan page. Um, you can email me. Uh, and I also am teaching a class coming up on Friday. Um, I'm sorry, on Thursday uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning at the Holiday Park, Church Park, <laughs> Holiday Park Church of God. Um, it's going to be on email marketing. I'm also being joined by a really fabulous speaker named Shambay Brown. So I'm excited to um, have that class, and I hope that you can make it. Um, thank you all for participating today and for trying to get a handle on this fascinating tool, this fascinating resource. I could talk about it all day. To me, it's just one of the most interesting things out there. Um, and, you know, it's kind of spurring on some other really interesting things. If you haven't checked out nextdoor.com, um, do sign up for that and see what that's about. And so, again, thank you so much for coming. And I look forward to um, seeing you in person and seeing you online. And I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you.